Welcome to Crypt After Dark, your number one place where you can find out that I have anemia. I am anemic. The blood work confirms it all. So that's what's been going on. I've had some health issues, and it turns out I just need to eat my spinach. I need to be Popeye. I need to eat some organs, some nice beef organs, or just eat spinach or supplement pills. Um, so that, that's what's been going on. I've been feeling down. That's one of the reasons why I haven't done a live stream. I've been feeling like trash. Uh, I've been very sporadically doing the live stream, being at home, just feeling down and out, trying to figure out what's going on, trying to figure out why in the world do I not have any energy. I, like, I literally am the most energetic person that I know of. And in fact, a lot of my friends would tell you I am the most energetic person that they know of. And I've been just, just bleh, just bleh, not wanting to do a, um, a show, not wanting to do Crypt After Dark. Not because I don't love it, but because I literally and physically and in the realm of chemistry lack the energy to do it. But here we are, baby. And now that I know what to do, I can fix the issue. We can get back up to running. And you know what? I know I don't look it, but I'm in my 30s. I'm in my 30s and everything goes downhill in your 30s. Okay, it's a very true statement. Everything goes downhill in your 30s. I am at the age where I randomly just choke on my spit for no reason. Yeah, I swear, I swear it's like a clock that once you hit 30, you immediately, I mean, right down to the second that you turn 30, you start choking on your spit for no reason whatsoever. And you will do it the rest of your entire life. <laughs> if, you, if you're over 30, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. But hey, um, Bitcoin's, it moved up. Bitcoin moved up. Now it's getting a little bit of a retracement. Um, uh, let me look at this. Yeah, it's getting a little bit of a retracement right now, but not too much. But it is hitting resistance at $64,000. But hey, let's go ahead. Let's look at the charts right now. The, the total cryptocurrency market cap is coming in at $2.47 trillion, which is different than this right here, which is $2.46 trillion. And we have $91 billion in volume. Trending coins are Turbo, TommyNet, Friend.Tech, um, largest gainers, Idea Chain, up 596%. Freaking GigaChad over here. Hey, if you're a GigaChad, Leave a plus one in the chat. Actually, there is no chat. Maybe. Pfft, who knows? Um, or, you know what? Just leave, a, just leave a high five. Just type high five if you're a Giga Chad. Because, hey, if you're a Giga Chad, we can be friends. If you're down with cigs and knives, we can hang. All right. Anyways, uh, Bitcoin coming in at $63,220.09. Ethereum coming in at three thousand one hundred and twenty-five dollars. BNB five hundred and eighty-eight. Solana one hundred and forty-four. XRP fifty-three cents. Dogecoin fifteen cents. Tongcoin five dollars and seventy-three cents. Up eight, a whopping eight percent, which is more than any other currency, uh, any other cryptocurrency in the top ten. Cardano at forty-six cents. That was a great, 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 great time to be buying Cardano. If you're a Cardano permable like I am, now is a great time to be adding to your stack. That's for dang sure. Shiba Inu coming in at uh, five zeros two four eight six, and uh, not not really much movement. Chainlink fourteen dollars. That's really really good. Still a good buy. Polygon at seventy three cents. Internet Computer Protocol thirteen dollars and fifty nine cents. Um, let's keep moving down. Let's keep moving down. Render $8.37, up 4% for the week. Immutable X actually is up 11%. That's pretty good. Um, th did I skip over anything else that was un over 11? No, no, I didn't. Immutable X, the, the, the number one coin. Uh, oh wait. Yeah. The number one coin in the top 37 up 11%, uh, render coming in at $8.37. Uh, dog with hat. We, we love dog with hat. Okay. We love dog with hat. I don't own any, but we love dog with hat. Also, just to let you know, r really, really, really fast. So I'm from the South. Okay. I haven't been to the, Ooh, I haven't lived in the South in eight years. I've, I've lived in California for almost a decade. Um, and let me tell you, I love the South. So, but okay. I've been talking to my mom and my brother all day today. So if you hear that Southern twang, just come right on out of there. You know that I'm Florida man. They literally call me Florida man where I'm from. Okay. Right here in Southern California, the people that know me, they call me Florida man. Of course, not all the time. They don't just say, Hey, Florida man, but they know I'm Florida man. Anyways, uh, optimism coming in at 20 or 20. That'd be a freaking awesome. I'd, <laughs> I take profits at 20 at $2 and 89 cents up 25% for the week. 
That's freaking awesome, dude. Let's go. Anybody who is in profits at $2.89, consider taking profits if you are up 25%. If that's you, if you're up 25% in optimism, consider taking profits or do whatever you want with your own money. I don't care. Uh, we actually need to refresh this. So let's look at the, the Bitcoin Greed and Fear Index. Here we are. This is three hours ago. We are, oh, let me go ahead and close that out. Uh, we are right back in the Greed and Fear Index uh, with the Greed at 67. That's really good. We did come down here into like the 40 zone. Uh, I, th I think that was right. Let me check yesterday really fast. Yeah, 48. The f I, thought it, I thought it was at 43 eventually. Or Yeah, there it was. Um, that was May 2nd. So that was yesterday. It did get all the way down to 43. Came back up to 48 uh, yesterday. And then as of 16 hours ago, still at 48. And now, um, keep going. Now, as of three hours ago, uh, so four hours ago, it was at 48. And now as of three hours ago, so literally just one hour difference, we are at 67. We are in the greed. Now, will we press further into the greed or will we trace back to the neutral or into the fear? We don't know. So what we need to do is we need to look at Bitcoin. We need to look at Bitcoin. So this was our day. My gosh, let's go. So I did draw this blue trend line. I'm super excited about this. I did draw this blue trend line right here. And because we did get a bounce. Now, if you follow this trend line, it's literally sitting right here on top of this candle. Now, it's not exact. Nothing ever can be. Well, okay, that's not true. So I've seen exact things. But for the most part, as far as all technical analysis goes, almost nothing is exact. It does happen. But it more, more often than not, you need to trim off a little bit of fat. You need to give a little bit of wiggle room. You don't need to make everything nice and tight. So it is sitting about right there. And we did get the bounce. This was a nice uh, hammer candle. And we just blasted through resistance. So good to see. We blasted through 59K because, look, we were looking, okay? I always say this. We don't know where the price is going, but we need to be ready for wherever it goes. And yesterday, I was saying that it, it is sitting right here. And look what happened. It's It closed as a hammer, nice hammer camel, candle. And now, as of today, it, it went all the way up. Jeez, that was a nice little pump, 6%. Now, we know that macroeconomics affects this, but charts are charts, okay? It takes everything into consideration, not just one thing, not just another thing, but everything into consideration, and we will see that in the chart. And that's what we see. This is exactly what we see. This is so good to see right here. We went up a, a nice, I mean, look at this. We blasted through 59K. If anything, 59K could as, as long as we don't get a massive dump to back to the downside that is equivalent to the to the gain that we just made we could just stick around at 59k and hold it as super great support but this is really awesome i'm super excited matter of fact we can even um we can even draw some trend lines here and may well, maybe uh see that's the hard part we could draw a trend line starting from let's see maybe here Maybe down here and maybe a nice little trend line just like this, maybe. But in order for this to confirm, you're going to want like two, three points of contact. So you have one point, two point. It would need to come down again, hold, and then bounce in order for it to be considered a trend line. So we will keep it this arbitrary yellow color and maybe this will happen. That would be great. I would love to, I would love to hit this resistance right here just at 64K, which we did. Um, what is the, uh, what is the 63 something? Um, where, where, where was this height at? I can't really see it because of everything up here, but it looks like it's about 63, six. Okay. So we'll just go with that about 63, six. It would be nice to just come up here, hit 64 K right on the money. Just give a nice little, nice little kiss. You know what I'm saying? And then come right back down, not right back down, you know, over the course of two, three days, four days, we come down. We touch this yellow trend line and then we bounce to the moon and we just blast through 64K and the next stop shop is $68,000. Actually, it'd be $67,000 because of this little peak right here. But whether it's 67 um, or it's 68, either way is fine with me. I would kind of consider this the range that it would want to bounce around in. If it wanted to hold a nice support level, I would like to see it consolidate and have a volume weighted average price between 68,000 and 64,000. Also notice that volume weighted average price that is VWAP. I would love to see that VWAP kind of bounce around in here. That's what I would like to see. 
And uh, and so with that, let's go ahead and let's look at the oscillators. An, uh, what is an oscillator? Okay, that's a fancy word. Did you know that your tower fan in your house oscillates back and forth? Back and it oscillates. Sometimes a fan just oscillates in one direction. But these are oscillators, and they oscillate back and forth between this 50 line right here. This little dotted line right here in the middle of the screen is called the 50 line because if you look right here where the cursor is, 50. I don't know if you guys can actually see it. Let me, uh, yeah, right here. So this little line right, okay, right there. This is the 50 line right here. It oscillates back and forth between the 50 line. Below the 50 line is a bearish momentum. Above the 50 line is bullish momentum, but it doesn't always work out that way. Why? Because if you look right here, we were bullish. We came down, we were bearish, and then we were bullish, and then we were bearish, and then we were bullish, and then we were bearish, and then we were bullish, and then we were bearish. Okay? Sometimes you just get chopped up, and that's exactly what this past month has been is people getting chopped up the price of bitcoin not really knowing what it wants to do it goes up it comes down it goes up and unless you're trading and you're, and you're looking at the hourly or four hourly time frame people have been chopped up i don't really necessarily like to look at time frames that small because i'm in it for the long term i'm not trying to leverage trade and make a quick buck but i know a lot of you guys are okay if that's you guys uh stick around still a good channel because it, like your macro should always affect your micro always all the time always all the time why because the macro time frames have a bigger pull than the micro time frames that is a very true statement and you know that if you've traded and i know that and now let's look at market cipher b we do have good news okay we do have good news but it's not that great of news okay we did come all the way down here we did come all the way to negative 70. We printed a green dot. We got some momentum waves that, that going up. And we have the money flow finally starting to try to curve to the upside. Now, what's the not so good news? Well, the volume weighted average price, it's pretty high. It, it, this is a good indicator to front run like what's going to happen. But if it's this high, this fast, like uh, it, it needs to eventually come down. Like the volume weighted average price eventually needs to come down to reality which means we should not be necess not necessarily be looking to go long just yet maybe maybe what i said whenever we were looking at the candlesticks here maybe what i said needs to happen maybe we hit up too a little too fast maybe this candle was a little bit too bullish maybe okay maybe not saying it is but maybe it is and then we just need to come back down retest support and then bounce maybe we consolidate if we consolidate oh man it's gonna be good it is going to be good because that means we have established strong support at sixty thousand dollars strong support at sixty thousand dollars okay <laughs> if we bounce around around the 59 to what is that uh sixty four thousand that means we establish that range as strong support and then we move to the upside now why is that important because in the last bull run <laughs> in the last bull run we were at sixty nine thousand. And if we have strong support at 60,000 because it consolidated there, remember this, the bigger the base, the higher into space. Remember that. So if it consolidates here for a month, oh man, we're looking at some juicy gains. We're, we're looking at $100,000 Bitcoin, maybe by July, August, something like that. What I, what I firmly believe is this. I don't think that we're going to be seeing $100,000 by June. That's in one month. Now, could we? Yeah, this is freaking crypto. Things can change at the drop of a dime, but I don't think that's the case. So uh, that would that would be really that would actually be really scary for the bull run to get that. Like, if we move to 100k by June in one month, that means the 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 bull run is slowing down. That's what that means. Okay. Uh, back to this. Um, let's look at Ethereum. We, we do like Ethereum. Ethereum is bouncing around. It is kind of consolidating. It is getting a bit of a bounce. Now, it could come up here, touch the slag, and come back down. But thus far, it's looking pretty good. Look at this, guys. You guys know Market Cypher B. If you have an anchor wave here, which is in the oversold zone right here between this dotted line and this solid line, and then you make a little, a little slant to the upside with this little guy. This is your trigger wave. So you have anchor wave and trigger wave. Another way to think about it is if you have a gun. If you have a pistol, this is your handle. This is your trigger. And... Uh, that's the moon okay that's the that's the moon so we'll keep this here uh we'll kind of extrapolate it out just a little bit um 
put it right there on the green dot. I like to be a little bit exact on this because I'm picky, but that's just me. So we'll, we'll keep it right here, just like this. And uh, th things are looking pretty good on the oscillator. The VWAP is coming up. The money flow starting to curve to the upside as well for Ethereum. Now let's look at Cardano. Ooh, all right, here we go. I told you guys. Told you. Oh, look at this. Is a double bottom pattern. Okay, we are in a double bottom pattern. Let's go ahead and we're gonna make a nice little horizontal line right here. Uh, uh, Cardano just made a double bottom pattern as of what? What day is this? Wednesday. So two days ago, Cardano made a double bottom pattern, and now it is confirmed. Why is it confirmed? Okay, because if we zoom out, I'll zoom out so you can see it. If you zoom out. It was in this pattern and it was looking scary. Well, it just broke out of this pattern. And now next stop shop is approximately 52 cents. If it goes past that, we're looking at 57 cents. I don't really think 52 cents, 51 cents is much as, as much of a resistance. But one thing that we need to keep an eye out on is if Cardano makes this little W pattern right here and it stops at 52 cents and says, you know what? Let's go to the moon. It's coming way up here. Okay. It, it, <laughs> it's moonshotting so, somewhere over here. Okay. This is where it's moonshotting. Um, <laughs> but anyways, this is, this is nice. Okay. This is, Cardano is looking really good. I'm super excited for Cardano right now. Um, it's looking super bullish. Let's look at the RSI. That is a, an, that is an inverse head and shoulders. I told you guys I would leave it up. That is an inverse head and shoulders. If I've ever seen one in so far as it can break this neckline, which is approximately, and again, everything is approximate, almost nothing is exact right here. So if we can break this little neckline, if the RSI can come above it, get past the 50 line into bullish momentum territory, everything's looking good for Cardano. I mean, that, pff, man, that'd be so nice. Oh, and look at this. This is what I'm talking about. Um, okay, so now I'm super bullish on Cardano, super bullish. I, nothing can change my mind on Cardano right now. It's, it's bullish. We have a shoulders, we have a head, we have a shoulders. Not only that, but we have your anchor wave here and your trigger wave here, and it is confirmed with a green dot. So this is nice. We have the three. Okay, so remember what I say. always say. I say the three hills of death, which is right here, one, two, and then kind of a little third one. I wouldn't necessarily count it, but it is what it is. And now we have the three hills of life, one, two, three. So the three hills of death, things go down. The three hills of life, things go up. We have an inverse head and shoulders. Uh, that is the three hills of life. The three hills of death is what I like to call a head and shoulders pattern. But look, the VWAP moving to the upside. The money flow, it is curving up. And we have the momentum waves confirmed. It's really nice. Also, the RSI is officially swapped green, which means you probably want to go bullish. But for how long, I don't know. You may have to wait on that. Now let's look at, ooh, this is looking so good. This is optimism. Oh, yes, this makes me happy. This makes me happy. All right, let's 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 fix these little lines here because we have uh, outdone ourselves here. This makes me a little happy. We do have uh, this bear flag, which is not good at all, but we are hovering around right here at resistance uh, on both the bear flag and the $2.90 level. So there is like a basically a, kind of a double set of resistance here. We could come back down to $2.53. If we break that, we're coming right back down here to $2.05, just like we were uh, at the beginning of, or right in the middle of April. But hopefully it doesn't break that because if it, if it breaks this bear flag, and if, if this bear flag plays out, again, we're looking at a $0.96 cents optimism, which if that's the case, I'm scooping it up <laughs> with everything I have. I like I'm mortgaging the house, I'm selling everything, and I'm buying optimism at 96 cents because that is a steal. Man, that's a steal. Uh, on, on the RSI, things are going nice and parabolic. Uh, we actually did get an inverse head and shoulders right here with the RSI with a shoulder, a head, and a shoulder. And it did break the, uh, the neckline, which is approximately, oh, let me go ahead and get rid of that. Um, and the, the, where's this thing at? The neckline, which is right there. That's the neckline. Right there, it did break it. So if we could see this same pattern with Cardano play out, Cardano's looking super mega bullish, just like Optimism is. So that is, man, that's really nice to see. I'll just go ahead and leave that up. And let's look at Optimism. Optimism did get the three hills of death on the VWAP, and the VWAP is coming back down closer to the zero line. The money flow kind of stagnating underneath the zero line, but that's still kind of good. 
And of course the momentum waves are moving to the upside with very little sign. There is slight sign of it slowing down, but very little sign of it slowing down. There is a bit of a curve right there. It's kind of curving, but hey, we've seen curves, okay? And sometimes curves are very, very deceptive. If you're married, sometimes you know that curves are very deceptive. So this is really good. I'm super bullish right now. Um, well, I shouldn't say super bullish. About as bullish as I can be given the circumstances. And uh, let's look at the DXY. That is silver. Uh, let's let's look at the DXY. Uh, let's see. The DXY, not looking good. Okay. So it was looking good for, for the dollar for a while. Okay. It was looking really good. We were in this pattern. It broke out and, and straight to the upside. It was really nice. All the cryptos bled. It gave you your other opportunity to take profits and buy crypto again. And now the dollar has crashed pretty drastically today. And whew, man, what a dip. So it is Friday. So that dollar is not moving. Uh, we will not get another candle until Monday because the markets have closed. And sheesh. Now we'll say it, it did kind of establish some support down here at 104. But I'll be honest with you. I don't know if I'm too bullish on this. I'm not going to lie. And here's why. Because typically when you see, and I'll zoom out. I'll zoom out so you can see it. When you see something like this happen, expect a little bit more downside. Just expect it. Okay. This is a head or maybe even a head and shoulders because we have a shoulder here forming a head. And now we could get another shoulder like this and then just crash into freaking oblivion for the dollar. I mean, we are printing money out the wazoo. So... That is probably going to be the case. If I had to guess, if I had to guess, let's look at silver. Silver's looking really, really nice. Uh, silver's at $26. I did say that way down here, look, I think silver's going to come down here to $25, which how, what percentage would it have to drop to go down to $25? It would have to drop 5%. So 5% over the next, what, two weeks? So it's not bad, okay? So it's a good buy for silver. And whether you get it at $25 or if you get it at $26, now's a great time. I posted up, you know what? We actually need to read this. Um, I'm going to show you guys my face really fast because we, we actually need to look at this. We need to look at silver. I think I've read, I think I've read this, but we need to actually talk about this a little bit more because silver is one of the things that you really need to be looking at, especially in this economy right now. Um, we need to be looking more and more at silver. We can no longer choose to ignore silver. Peter Schiff, you may not like him, okay? You may not like Peter Schiff at all, but I will tell you this. We we need to talk about silver. He is right about silver and gold. So let's go ahead. Um, let's go ahead. Let's flip over to this. All right, here we go. People always ask me why I prefer silver over gold. Well, to keep it short, there's a huge gap in price between silver and gold. In order to close that gap, gold either must come down or silver must go up. So let's take a look at silver. So silver on the daily time frame. Silver broke down of this bullish pattern. Uh, this is the case. Um, so silver broke out of this bullish pattern. Uh, this in the case of the price going up. What? This in the case of the price will be go going up. What does that even mean? Um, oh, oh, okay. So fun fact. I Most of the time when I post, I'm using dictation and then almost never writing with my thumbs. Almost never. Like it is very anomalous of me to use my fingers to type a post on X. So this indicates, but my dictation could not pick that up. So... <laughs> So this indicates the price will be going up, and it does indicate that. However, in the short term, silver may come, may be coming down to retest that yellow trend line of approximately $25. Silver, weekly time frame. What I stated on the daily time frame is confirmed on the weekly time frame. The higher, time, the, higher the time frame, the stronger the confirmation. I just told you guys that earlier. So in the next few weeks, silver could be at $25. So, the, I mean, that's it. Th this is the weekly time frame. Silver could be at $25 in the next few weeks. Silver time, uh, silver weekly time frame. Market Cypher B confirms a red dot this week. And, of course, this was uh, April 23rd. A strong indication that the price will be going lower. And let me tell you, the price went lower. The volume weighted average price, or VWAP, is moving down, which is the yellow. And, again, look at, look at this. The three hills of death. One, two, three. Look, I'm, hey, I don't make the rules, okay? I just noticed the patterns. Um, 
the, uh, the volume weighted average price is moving down. This indicates that the average price will be moving lower again, $25. Lastly, even though silver may be going down to two, even though silver may be going down $2 uh, in the upcoming weeks, it doesn't mean silver at a $27 at $27 is a bad buy. That's a really good buy. Given the amount of inflation that is taking place, you cannot afford to dodge silver any longer. I should have put doge. It would have been funnier to dodge silver any longer. Let me explain why. If your parents have bought silver in 1967 because they understood that the dollar was steadily losing value as it is now, they would have made 27 times their money today. Let me ask you, do you believe, okay, let me ask you this. Do you believe that the dollar is losing value every single day? then do not make the same mistake your parents made. Buy silver. Buy it. I'm sure back in 1967, when the price was only just above a dollar, they probably thought silver was very expensive. Back then, the dollar had more value. Now it has less value. Do not make the same mistakes. Do not, do not make the same mistakes your parents made in 1963. Buy silver. You can't afford it. Why do I choose silver over gold? Because there's a huge gap, like never before, between silver and gold. In order to close that gap, either silver goes up or, or gold comes down. That's the only way that gap closes. And if you're holding gold, the price of gold will come lower. But if you're holding silver, you have a chance of it going higher. Now, will gold go lower? No, I don't think so at all. Will silver go higher? Yes, absolutely. Just like gold. Why? Because they are devaluing the currency. We, we, we preach this time and time and time again. They are devaluing the currency. It's not time to hold the dollar. We are not in peacetime anymore. We are at war. We're literally in World War III, even though it's not officially declared, blah, 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 whatever. Look around. You have Ukraine, Israel. You have um, Taiwan, China. You have America getting involved. Uh, against Russia with Ukraine and getting involved against Gaza with Israel. Look, and you have Gaza and Israel, and then you got all the countries around them fighting. Look, the world is at war. We are no longer at peacetime. They will print money to fund their war, just like they did in World War I, just like they did in World War II, just like they did in the 1800s, just like they did in the 1800s. They have to print money to fund their war. Just like that. It happens all the time. All the time. Matter of fact, it happened in Germany. It literally happened in Germany. You, do you know how Adolf Hitler was able to fund his war? He printed money. This is exactly what happened. You know how Napoleon did it? He printed money. Actually, now that I think about it, that actually may be wrong. That actually may be wrong. I think Napoleon was the only one that actually used sound economic. I could be wrong on that. Um, and I might be conflating him with someone else from that era. But I think Napoleon actually used some money and won. If I'm wrong about Napoleon, leave it in the comments. I would like to know. Either that or after the stream, I'm just going to look it up. Um, so uh, so that's that, guys. Uh, now let's let's look at this. This is Crypto After Dark. I am Jacob Perry with the Bitcoin 4B, and we have 289 subscribers and 116 videos. My name is Jacob Perry with the B, and this is Crypto After Dark. I do make every last one of these thumbnails myself. So if you guys wouldn't mind, if you are watching on X, please come over to YouTube at Crypto After Dark. Just go ahead and type that little bad bird in right there and just hit the follow button, hit the subscribe button. That'd be really nice. If you are watching on YouTube, please know this is a recording, even though it says live right up here or up here, whichever one it is. Even though it says live in the thumbnail, it is live exclusively on X. Okay, so please go over there. Link in the description of this video and in the bio right here at Presup Perry. Just go over to X, hit that follow button. Really helps me out. We can do this thing full time. We can get better, more creative, more awesomeness. Look, the goal is to do this full time. The goal is to be supported by viewers like you. Unlike PBS, which is 100% BS. They are not supported like by viewers like you. In so far as they mean like, oh, your donation. No, like they take your taxes and then they run with it. And then next thing you know, grizzly bears are getting transgender surgery. Anyways, moving on. Uh, if you are watching on YouTube, come over here to X. This is Crypt After Dark on the show. Uh, we do talk about crypto, politics, money, economics, banks, conspiracy theories. We talk about it all. Because as you know, crypto is not in its own little bubble and neither is anything else. 
whatever happens in crypto affects everything because the governments have Bitcoin on their balance sheets. And whatever happens to everything affects crypto because the governments have Bitcoin on their balance sheets. That is why. <laughs> governments, BlackRock, the World Economic Forum. By the way, it's not just like little baby governments, okay? It's not just El Salvador, okay? It's BRICS. It's the United Nations. <laughs> it's not just baby countries that you think are baby. It's not just third world countries. Like America has, I think, $50 billion, $50 billion worth of Bitcoin. Think about that. China has a lot. Russia has a lot. Brazil has a lot. South Africa has a lot of Bitcoin. They all have Bitcoin. And that's why everything affects everything. That's why crypto is not in its own little bubble. Because it is now a global asset. So there you go, guys. So that's that. Now let's look at our let's look at our, our homeboy, Dr. Peter St. Ange, PhD. We do I mean, what a guy. Look at this. What a guy. What a stud. You know that this guy, you know that this guy is married. You you know it. You you don't get this nice of a forehead and not be married. Those glasses, on point. Okay. This dude knows he looks good, and you know he's got a wife. All right, so that is Dr. Peter St. Ange PhD. I definitely and highly recommend everyone go over to him on his ex. Hit the follow button. Go go check out his sub stack. So good. Get his newsletter. Listen to his podcast. He doesn't pay me to say this, okay? I'm just wanting you to listen to him because it's good stuff. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, it's so good. Um, he's also connected with FX Hedge. Whatever you think about them, I don't care. Whatever you think about Dr. Peter St. Ange PhD, I don't care. I like him. I've talked with him. And his stuff is exactly what I say. I mean, to the point. So this is what he has to say. For the first time in our history, kids are doing worse than their parents. That is a fact. That is a fact. Unless you're in my case. Okay, unless you're in my case. Then I'm actually doing better. But hey, the, that's neither here nor there. So yes, they killed the Golden Goose. Who is they? It is not they them. Unless they them is the Federal Reserve Bank and the... Uh, and the GOP and the Democrat. Okay, that's the they them. They killed the golden goose. What is the golden goose? That is the capitalistic economy that allows people to thrive generation better after the next generation, after the next generation. That is the golden goose. So each generation gets better. However, <laughs> this generation is not better. As a whole, is not better than the previous generation. At all. I look at people who are... This is not a joke. I literally look at people who are in their 40s, okay? And they are in a better position than people who are in their 30s. It's just a 10-year difference. It's just a 10-year difference. Typically, a generation is 40 years. But when it comes to an economy, a lot of people have a 10-year spread about who, who can go first. Some people have a 5-year spread. I know people who have a five-year spread who are like, I don't know, four or five years older than me. They're doing way better than I am. Way better. They, they knew about investing before I did. They're doing really good. People who are just now getting on board with investing right now, whew, man, they're trying to play catch-up. Ash catch-up, okay? That's what they're trying to play, ash catch-up. Um, if, if you're just now learning about investing, if you're just now learning about Bitcoin, okay, you, you are literally, may, you may be, a day late and a Satoshi short. You may be. It, it might be the last time that you can even invest a little bit of your money into cryptocurrency and in order to try to outpace inflation. This may be the last time until 2030. Remember that date. Mark it down. Clip this. Remember the date 2030. That's when fit hits the sham. Okay? Just remember that. Or at bare, at bare minimum, it happens before that. So anyways, all right, back to this. Uh, this is making the young depressed and it's making them angry, turning every political grievance into an opportunistic inf infection, which we're seeing on campuses right now. And we are. There's still time if Washington can just quit crushing the economy. And matter of fact, that is kind of the next thing that we're looking at. This is this. This is from uh, Wall Street Apes. But this look at this piece of work. Jeez, you want you want to talk about somebody that I I do not like? Let me let me tell you something. This lady right here, no. First of all, uh, her haircut is awful. Secondly, you can't look like this and pretend like you're not a villain. You know she's a villain. You know it. You can tell. Look at this lady. Two water bottles. What do you need two water bottles for? Hmm. 
What do you need two of them for? Look at this. Two eyes? Oh, one nose? A mouth? What I just described to you is the Loch Ness. Anyways, um, that's actually a quote from the office. Anyways, let's read this. We've officially reached the point where the U.S. government isn't even pretending first-time home buyers can afford a home. She's literally the person in charge of the freaking treasury. Literally w one of the main people that says whether America lives or dies. Liter literally is one of those people. The government isn't even pretending first-time home buyers can afford a home. United States Secretary of Treasury, Janet Yellen. And, um, you know, there was that one thing going around a few years ago, no telling Yellen, because there's no telling how much Yellen's going to be printing and spending. Uh, in fact, this woman, hey, this woman said America can afford two wars. <laughs> what, okay, first of all, what does that mean she thinks about your life? And secondly, what does that mean she thinks about other people's lives? And thirdly, what does that mean that she thinks about the economy? Janet Yellen is evil to the core. And you know what? Even if she's just doing her job because there's people over her. Yeah, there's a thing called dignity and honor that you have to give an account before God for. And <laughs> let me tell you something. Doing your job doesn't play with him. Okay, just letting you know. I know him. Doing your job does not play. Does not play. All right. Uh, home home ownership for people who don't already homes. Uh, by the way, this is a quote from her in this video. Home ownership for people who don't already own homes. First time home buyers. Yeah, it's almost prohibitively expensive okay it's insanely expensive is what she means the astronomically expensive more like you'll never be able to buy a home expensive quote house prices have gone up and now much higher interest and mortgage and mortgage rates is almost impossible for first-time home buyers and let me tell you something this has to end eventually th th it has to like th this is everything is a market including the housing market Yes, the yes house housing markets go up and they come down. Okay, that is very true. Eventually, this can't be. It's just like the crypto market. It's just like the precious metals market. It's just like any other market. When things are this high, this bad, this fast, this hot, this red, there has to be a correction. There has to be. And there will be. And so people ask me all the time, why aren't you buying a home yet? Well, first of all, I'm one waiting for my crypto gains. Okay. I can tell you that. Uh, and, uh, secondly, I'm not dumb. Okay. I'm not dumb. And, and here comes, here comes the wild part. So I was actually talking to someone about this. Now, this isn't the full thought, but it is a little bit of a reason why maybe you should not want to invest in real estate right now. Think about this. Let's say, let's say you do the burst strategy. I don't Do I actually have my burr book with me? No, I don't. Let's say you do the burst strategy. You want to buy a home, you want to rehab it, you want to rent it out, you want to refinance it and repeat, okay? That's the burst strategy. And so many people have done this over the past, like since 2008, 2009, when the economy crashed and you could pick up a home for a dime a dozen. So many people did this. And honestly, it's kind of one of the reasons why we're in a bad economy right now. So you have all these people that are buying homes, okay? Right now, right, right now, okay? You have all these people buying homes at the top of a market. Now, because they're, uh, because the home's price is inflated, because the home's price is inflated, and because of the interest rates are being astronomically high for mortgages, because of the taxes are insanely high, the, the real estate investor needs to make sure his tenant pays all of it, including the insurance, and then the real estate investor can tack on maybe an extra hundred dollars as kind of the one percent rule, maybe an extra two hundred dollars, maybe insofar as that tenant can pay it. However, if that tenant cannot pay it, if they cannot pay the mortgage, if they cannot pay the taxes, if they cannot pay the insurance, if they cannot pay the rent, if the investor who is renting out their homes cannot make a profit and make sure that that mortgage is paid, guess what happens? The bank takes the home. It's called a foreclosure. So all these people right now at the top of a market buying expensive homes who are rehabbing the homes, who are who are making sure their homes are more in value so they can rent it out, cash out, refi, and do that thing. You need to realize that the tenants, their income is not keeping up with the inflation of your home. Okay, this is how you get foreclosures. This is how a housing market crashes. Now, this isn't the full thought. This is just half the picture. 
And I would say you need to be careful of this. If you are an inexperienced investor, okay, or if you are a person who owns a lot of real commercial real estate or just resident a lot of residential doors, you need to be aware that this is one of the dangers, okay? Like this, this, this is dangerous. So be aware that if you pull out too much from your cash out refi, your tenant, because inflation and wages not keeping up with inflation, your tenant cannot pay your rent. Your real estate investment company will not make money. And if you're not making money, the bank's not making money. And you know what? Either you go under or the banks go under. And the banks will make sure that you go under first. And then they'll come along after you. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. So just be aware of that. Uh, so that's that. Uh, now let's move on here. Let's move on to uh, uh, FX Hedge. I do I thoroughly love FX Hedge quite a bit. We're actually almost done here. Japan uh, Japan just spent billions to boost the... <laughs> this is so funny to me. Um flailing yen that's actually one of my favorite words flailing it's just kind of flailing in the wind uh flailing in the wind yen so japan just spent billions of dollars to boost the flailing yen and the u.s may get involved too of course they are because the u.s and japan are tied they're like brothers and sisters uh japan's yen has been on a sustained slide against the dollar yeah it's pretty bad okay the dollar is way better than the yen right now way like it's it's bad okay so the yen has been on a um, on a sustained slide against the dollar, a slump that's great for foreign tourists looking for cheaper travel, but could prove disastrous for its economy. Let me tell you something. <laughs> could prove? <laughs> it is proving disastrous, especially whenever you include the fact that all the bureaucrats over in Japan just brought a, just brought about all the Muslims, okay? And none of the Japanese people, none of the Japanese people. All the Japanese government want it because, of course, they're controlled by the World Economic Forum, their International Monetary Fund, their World Bank. They're controlled by Klaus Schwab's and the Rothschild. That, that's the whole government for you because they have a central bank. But the people of Japan are so sick of it. They're literally, like, look, if you think what's going on right now in the university is bad, go check out Japan, okay? They're typically, okay, think about it from this perspective. They are typically a very passive people. Very nice. If you say something that they find abrasive, they won't say anything. They, they just kind of like a pushover. Right now, they're in the streets. They are sick of this illegal BS. They do not like it. Now, back to this. Um, so now, uh, it looks like Japan is tapping into vast hordes of dollars to help the yen. They're literally like, they're like, hey, um, we need to transfer the dollars for yen so we can have more yen. Or I, I don't know what's going on. What does it mean by tapping into vast hordes of the U.S. dollars for the yen? which has fallen 13% against the dollar in the last year. That's insane. In other words, their currency is screwed. The yen sucks, okay? I'm just going to be real. If you're Japanese, okay, just know I love your country. I cannot wait to visit your country. Um, just know your currency sucks. Your, your currency is bad. Your currency is really bad. Um, now, ours isn't even, like, ours isn't any better comparatively. Um, or, or, sorry, let me rephrase that. Ours isn't uh, any better as far as it goes, it's lost 99% of its value since the creation of the Federal Reserve Bank and the income tax in the early 1900s. However, in relation to other crappy currencies, uh, ours is better than yours, and it's not going to be that way for long. So uh, it appeared that Japan spent nearly $35 billion to prop up, this is another really fun word, uh, beleaguered yen on Monday and returned to the markets late in the U.S., um, Trading day on Wednesday, Bloomberg reported. So there you go. So that's that's that. Poor Japan. I love Japan. So the last thing that we need to look at is actually something I was super excited about. That one of my dreams, okay? One one of my goals in life is to talk to the infamous, the greatest Alex Jones over in Austin, Texas at Infowars.com. One of my greatest things that I've been waiting for for a long time. And let me tell you something. It happened. It happened. Right here, baby. It happened right here. Here we are. This is Twitter Spaces. Uh, so uh, what they were talking about was, has civil war already started in America? And let me tell you something. If you've been watching this channel, you know that I have talked about this. Either America repents and turns to God, or there's going to be a civil war. And it's not a war against people with people. Okay, It's not Democrat versus Republican citizens. It's not that. It's the 1800s all over again. It is the government against the people. Always has been that way always will be tyrants will be tyrants okay it just is what it is if you don't think abraham lincoln was a tyrant you don't know history you've only been public schooled and you read a public school history book that's all you know okay 
That's all you know. But most of the states in the South are like, yeah, this is tyrannical. This is really bad. And it was. The whole the whole time leading up to it, think about this, okay? Think about this. It, kind of to prove my point here. With Abraham Lincoln and his war against the states, because that's what it was. Abraham Lincoln gave his Gettysburg Address. You know what? Uh, the slaves will be free. And the, South, the, the southern states were like, all right, we're out. We'll, we'll, we'll see you later. And Abraham Lincoln said, like hell you will. I'm coming for you. And there will be blood. The bloodiest war you will ever see on this land. And that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what. The South literally just tried to peacefully and nice, like, what's the word I'm looking for? Peacefully and diplomatically separate and say, all right, well, hey, I'll see you later. Whether for better or worse, morally, kind of kind of irrelevant, okay? For better or worse, they decided to dipl diplomatically and peacefully say, okay, we're out. And Abraham Lincoln made the bloodiest war that America has ever seen. Think about that. A war against the states. And it will happen again. America is in a civil war right now. There is a populist movement rising up in America. And it cannot be stopped. And the government doesn't want it to be stopped. They want blood. They are the sharks. They are the piranhas. And the American people have been beaten up. The American people are bleeding out and the government wants more and they will come for us. And that is why our founding fathers who were good Calvinist, Anglican, um, Episcopalian, who were good um, Congregationalist men. And there's like four of them that only get recognition these days because it's all the atheists that want you to believe that none of these founding fathers of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution were Christian men. They don't want you to believe that. They want you to think only four men were there and they were all theists at best. And other than that, they were atheists. Okay, that, First of all, talk about rewriting history. Um, that's not true. Just literally go read every name who signed the Declaration of Independence and then go look at what church they belong to and find out how faithfully accurate or how faithfully uh, attached to their church that they were. Go think about that. Uh, back in the 1800s, uh, what was it? Oh, that's going to bug me. It was a... It was a Supreme Court trial. Uh, was it? Mm, it's going to bug me. Somebody against the Holy Trinity. Oh, the United States against the Holy Trinity. There it is, obviously. The United States against the Holy Trinity. Holy Trinity Church is what it was. And the judge said, ruled in favor of the United States or of the Holy Trinity Church. The Supreme Court judge ruled in favor of the Holy Trinity Church in the 1800s and said, of course they're right because everyone knows that America is a Christian nation and it always has been. Hmm. Do you think a bunch of atheists would have set up a Christian nation? No. The majority of them were Christian. So anyways, back to this. <laughs> we're getting well off the trails. So anyways, um, I've been talking about this for four years, that if America doesn't repent, there will be a, a more civil war. Let me actually come to my, my profile here in case you guys wanted to. Oh, look, there we are. There we are. In case you guys actually wanted to hear me talk, it is right here, and I do start speaking at one hour and seven minutes and 24 seconds. I hope you guys enjoy that. Uh, I was able to, man, I was able to tell 1,300 people to stop acting as if God doesn't exist because we live in reality, okay? God exists. If you don't believe God exists, you're delusional. I don't know what to tell you, okay? It just is what it is. Now, I can't say that over on YouTube because it's ran by a bunch of atheists, but over on X, there's more freedom of speech, which is why I exclusively live stream on X. So if you are watching on X, please go over to YouTube at Crypto After Dark. Hit the subscribe button. If you are watching on YouTube, again, link in the description for X. Uh, link in the description and in the bio. And please go over there and tap that follow button. So with that, guys, that is the show. Thank you for watching Crypto After Dark. I love you guys. And I will see you at sunrise.